In a recent lesson, I talked about the idea that playing fingerstyle, you can sometimes feel trapped in open position. And that can be true not just on the one chord, but also on the four chord, especially on, say, blues in A, where there's a tendency to you know, go to a chord like this. when you get to the four chord, the D. In this lesson, I wanna show you a way to use some chord substitutions to open up the way that you think about playing on the four chord and therefore open up what licks and ideas you can play when you get to the four chord on a blues and A. Check it out. So I talked in a previous lesson about a four-step process for playing licks up the neck. First, identifying what scale you're gonna use, so basically what notes you're gonna be choosing from. Second, uh, deciding how you're gonna phrase those notes, what kind of rhythms you're gonna sort of pour those notes into. Uh, third, what kind of bass you're gonna play the licks over. And then finally, how to add in some chords for a kind of call and response feel between licks and chords. Now, in that lesson, I focused on how to play over the one chord on an A blues, basically over an A. And the dilemma with blues in A is that when you get to the four chord, yeah, you could play the fourth string in the bass, but it doesn't really have the same kind of weight that you get from the fifth string and the sixth string. And the workaround for, you know, since the 1920s and probably before then, is to play this D7 with F sharp in the bass. Right, so you've got your root and fifth and flat seven of your D7 chord up here, and then you put the third of the chord in the bass, the F sharp. And that's got a nice, you know, heft to it. But you are kind of stuck down here holding that down. So let's look at the kind of licks we want to put on top and then figure out how to do the bass underneath it and take advantage of like a simple chord substitution that will let us open things up and use more open strings in the bass. So first, we're gonna stick to, again, the A minor pentatonic or A blues scale. And you can use those two things interchangeably. And that scale will sound great over both the one chord and the four chord. You don't have to change, change scales just because you change chords on a blues. So in this position, we've got the root, the flat seven, the five, here's the flat five if we were gonna use it, the four, the flat three, and the root of A minor pentatonic. So those are the notes we're gonna use. And there are two kinds of simple blues phrasing that are always really effective, short and long resolutions. Short resolutions starting around the and of three, so one and two and three and four and one and four and one, something like that. So it resolves, it starts before the downbeat and four and, and it lands on the downbeat of the next measure. So, and then long resolution, So that starts more than a measure before the place you're going to land, but it still lands on one, on the downbeat. So if we start with the pentatonic scale and then we apply those two kinds of phrasing to it, we're halfway there. Now we wanna look at what the bass is doing. So if we start out up here, we've still got a D in the bass, but unlike this note on the fourth string, the fifth string has more weight. So if we play a chord voicing like this, with the root and the third and the flat seven, and then the fifth on top, it looks like this B7 chord, right? Except we've just slid it up to be a D. And if we start off like this, I talked in another lesson recently about the rocking bass, how instead of just playing four beats in a row on the root, you can play two beats on the root and two beats on the fifth. Now we've got two bars of D7 on the blues in A, bars five and six. 
So we can start off in bar five playing root and fifth. And then in bar six, we can play the root again for two beats. And then we can add in a chord substitution because we're about to go back to A. And whenever you're going to the one chord in a chord progression, you can always precede that with its five, which in this case is E. And even though E is not supposed to happen at this moment in the blues progression, you can use it as a chord substitution because it is taking you back to the one chord. So you end up, in terms of chords, having this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. And as a bass line, it gives you the root and the fifth of D back to the root, and then the root of E, and then we're home. And that means that there are two moments in these two bars when you've got a couple beats where you're playing an open string and so therefore you are not completely tied down to this chord voicing. So now we need to look at how to put those licks over that bass line. And so we've got this phrase, this short resolution, which we can land here on the downbeat of measure five, grabbing the root, flat seven, and fifth of D7, which means we're playing, it's also working as the root of that A scale. And we can have our bass line, right? Two, three, four, right? So there's our rocking bass. And then what if we have a long resolution to take us back to A? So here's where having that open E string helps out. We're on one, two, three, four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one. So, and all those blues licks, all those A minor pentatonic notes, you can reach with a combination of your pinky and index finger and open strings while holding down this bass note. And then here, you're pretty much free to go out of that shape, which means you could really play a lot of different things there. But let's keep it simple for now. All right, and that means that you've got a whole phrase here that coming out of the A chord in bar four. So you'd be on in bar four, one, two, three, and four, and one. And then back to the one chord. So in context, if you start at the beginning of the whole chord progression, it would sound like this. So in this case, we can summarize our four-step process as choose your notes, choose your phrasing, work out your bass line, and then work out how to play those phrases over that bass line. Then you can fold all that back into the context of the overall blues progression, which might already include single note licks, call and response, rocking bass line, and all that stuff. Getting out of open position while keeping the steady bass going is really challenging, but also really satisfying. If you're a fingerstyle guitar player looking for new ideas and a more organized, ongoing approach to learning how to improvise on the blues, I encourage you to check out my membership, The Fingerstyle Five, which you can learn more about at the link below or the link on screen. As ever, thanks so much for watching. If you've got a question or a comment about today's lesson, please leave it down below. I would love to hear from you, and I'll see you next time.